This is a 48 year old patient with diabetes, uh, failed renal transplant and breast pain. Now, when you're starting out and you, hopefully you guys are getting these cases and getting in there and you're seeing this and you can see this calcium I showed in the beginning of the lecture and you see the reconstitution a few centimeters after you get super excited because you're like, this is going to be a good case. You know, I, I'll let Dr. Tamal sit in the outside and I'll just take over here. And the next step that happens is you're de-escalating wires and this is what happens. And then uh, what happened is you know that you went subminimal and now you're like, oh crap. And this is kind of your face. Uh, you eventually get across whether it's re-entry or your wire goes, but after ballooning, this is what you're left with. And that's not a, not a comfortable situation. Even if the flow goes down, there's no reason why you should ever leave a dissection such as this. This is again in that same area where we get that heavy um, disease at Hunter's, just past Hunter's Canal. Um, so for me in these situations, it's a high flexion zone like we talked about. I'm gonna do a superif most likely uh, because you want something that's gonna resist that flexion. Uh, a lot of the bare metal stents that we have don't have a lot of resistance there and they will have uh, poor outcome. So either it's going to be liver PTX or supera, or um, no, there's also uh, it will be another stents that we have. But in terms of heavy flexion, heavy calcium, uh, I tend to favor the, the supera. It has a double woven nitinol uh, structure. So it has technically the most resistance. It does take a little bit of um, experience to deploy the stent, which is why a lot of people don't like it. But to me, uh, if something takes more effort and care, I want that because that means that it should be in the right hands and uh, it works very well when you, when you do it right. The downside of it is it's hard to land the proximal edge of the stent because that stent elongates or shortens depending on if you prep the vessel very well. So there's a little bit of learning curve and understanding how to use it, but when you use it right, the data and the outcomes anecdotally are very good.